Welcome everybody back to Pruitt Field for this matchup, the Battle of the Bricks. It's the Bobcats, it's the Red Hawks. Welcome everybody back to Peden Stadium for a matchup between the Ohio Bobcats and Central Michigan Chippewas on homecoming weekend. Welcome everybody back to Ohio Bobcats Athletics. This is a game of volleyball between the Ohio Bobcats and the Kent State Golden Flashes. The Bobcats came out victorious in the first set uh, by a score of 25 to 23. Uh, so very good start for the Bobcats as they are here at home in front of their crowd looking to be able to pull off their fourth straight win. My name is Cedric Granger, and once again, I'm joined by Zach Mothersball. Zach, what were some of the things that you noticed uh, within the first set? Snap is down, that hold is good, and that kick is true for the Bobcats. 10-10 to 10 is the score on homecoming weekend with 2 minutes, 44 seconds left to go in the second quarter. There's a timeout in the field, and you are listening to the Ohio Bobcats football. Overtime number two. This is the first of the season for the Miami Red Hawks. The Bobcats, they were in double overtime. It's just their last game. So we'll see how it goes down. It's 3-3 three to as three the score. Very exciting game. 2-2, two two, they went into the halftime break. 3-3, three three, they went into the overtime after each team scored twice in the or each team scored in the last five minutes of the game. And now the Red Hawks and the Bobcats are fighting for supremacy. Second place in the MAC is on the line as both teams try to remain in that top four so they can be able to qualify for the MAC tournament. Center. And there's the cross inside, tries to head it in, and, and they're able to score that goal as Buffalo very quickly into this game in the eighth minute is already able to strike first on Ohio. Buffalo has not allowed a single goal in a month. Yeah. The Bobcats are looking to break that streak that Buffalo has. You see Abby Townsend work with Where the ball one-on-one. -on -one. She finds her teammate, and that's and a score. goal. What a goal right goal. there. As that shot was a score, was assisted by Abby Townsend and scored by Madison, Madison Clayton, Clayton, the graduate senior. Oh, here for the Bobcats. And Cox is back in motion. We'll see if they go to Tuggle this time. No, they're going to do QB draw to Rogers. Rogers looking for space. Rogers works his way into the end zone, crosses the plane, and into the end zone for the Bobcats. His first touchdown of the day as Rogers punches it in from four yards out, and the Bobcats find themselves down just by one point, 10 to 9 here at Peden Stadium. On these penalty corners, but they definitely need a conversion right now. Here comes the Red Hawks on the penalty corner. There goes the set. There's the shot. That one is saved by Neela Grainer as Neela Grainer is able to go dive out and knock that one to the left of the goal. Three to two, Bobcats in the lead. Red Hawks trying to change it. There's the set. Sturm with the shot. Another and big save. And then it's defensive save, and then the shot is in. The Red Hawks are able to score and respond as Claudia Negrete Garcia adds to her goal totals that is her 15th goal of the year she is an all mac talent and an all mac player and even though she was injured earlier in the game she came in in the fourth quarter and she's able to score comes miami looking for a hole and they do find a little spot there as that was great speed by paula pinna who forced a penalty corner in the first overtime period and then now the red hawks working there's a shot and that shot is scored by the red hawks as who else but the star player for the team, Claudia Negrete Garcia, to get the game-winning goal as she's able to work her way around the attacking circle for her 16th goal of the season. That leads the MAC, and she's going to be a potential MAC Player of the Year candidate. And with that goal, the Bobcats continue their woes against the Red Hawks in a heartbreaking fashion. And what are some of the players to watch today uh, for Ohio and then also some of the players to watch for UC Davis? Yeah, for Ohio, we have both of the sisters, Bodie Littlefield and Wesley Littlefield, are both making um, big strides in this season. Bodie is actually a freshman, so she is really great to watch. Um, Kaylin Long, who transferred in from Bucknell, she's amazing. She's had um, a great season so far. Uh, there's also Jillian Shive, who is using her extra year of eligibility. She is an amazing player. She's had one goal and one assist this season. Yep, you're definitely right about that. Kaylin Long has had one heck of a season so far. I mean, against Michigan State, their defensive effort was fantastic, and she was one of the main focal points of the defense and how they were able to get so many stops, even when Michigan State generated all those penalty corners. Exactly. All of those penalty corners, that game could have easily been a 6-7 to seven nothing game. There were so many penalty corners, but the Bobcats did a great job of stopping them all. 
Yep, they did a great job of staving off those attacks. And UC Davis, they're coming off a game where they had seven penalty corners, so they might try to generate something right there. As it looked like UC Davis almost did something that Michigan State did a lot the last game, was trying to get those uh, fast break sort of opportunities where one player is just faster than the others. They try to get a up ahead of everybody else and try to get a one-on-one -on -one situation with the goalkeeper. Yeah, Michigan State had a lot of different ways of culminating those penalty corners, something that I've never really seen before, and it was interesting to see how they were doing it. So I'm interested to see what the Aggies are going to do today and try and get some of those penalty corners. It is, and you see, you see Davis trying to work into the attacking circle right here as they're working around the perimeter, and then they fall back a little bit. Bobcats trying to win two out of three on this home stretch. They defeated Northeastern on Saturday by a score of three to two. They lost to Michigan State the next day, two to zero. And now after a couple of days rest, they're here taking on UC Davis, uh, coming all the way from California. And UC Davis, they play in one of the most interesting conferences I've ever seen. Sam, would you like to share a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. Their conference is really interesting. And when me and Cedric were going over their conference, they play teams on the opposite side of the country like UMass, U Albany, Maine, and they're all the way out in California, but they also have teams out there like Stanford that are also in this conference. So it's a very weird conference because they're on two different sides of the country, but it's, it's cool to see them out here in Athens at more of a neutral site. I can say this isn't even as far as they'll go this season. It is. It's definitely interesting to see that. Um, again, going 2,000 plus miles to play these games and also in the conditions that they're not used to as you see a shot go a little bit over and left of the goal there. Uh, just playing all these games really far away in Ohio and Athens not even being their farthest one that they have to play. It definitely creates a really interesting dynamic and it really seemed like it was a tough thing for them last season as they went 1-10. and ten. They weren't able to win any true road games last year and their only win was against a California school. Uh, so they weren't able to win any of those games on the eastern side. So they're looking to uh, kind of get rid of their demons uh, from the east coast. Yeah, their first win this season just happened in Columbus at a neutral location against St. Louis University. So they're looking to get another win today, but I know the Bobcats want this win just a little bit more. Yep, definitely. We'll see how Ohio comes out here. It looks like they've been a little bit more aggressive so far. Um, one of my favorite analogies I always love to use, I say it every game, is that one team is going to be the hammer and the other team is going to be the nail on a given quarter. And we're going to see which team is going to come out to be the aggressor, which team is going to come out to force the action. And we shall see how Ohio sets up right here as there are multiple dangerous goal scorers uh, for Ohio. And every game that they've had a goal, they've scored. And as you see a shot, Tanson, there's a shot that scored. As that is a goal for Caitlin Whittle. And that shot was assisted by freshman Bodie Littlefield as Bodie Littlefield gets her first assist of her career and Caitlin Whittle gets her second goal of the season. And like I was mentioning right before that goal, Sam, every game in which Ohio has scored, they have won. Yes, Cedric, and that was Bodie Littlefield's first assist of the season, like you mentioned. And she is just a freshman, but you would never, ever know from how she's playing today. Yep, that was sensational. And let's see how Ohio tries to respond to that as UC Davis is now on their heels. As Ohio's been the aggressor so far as that pass was off the stick right there of a UC Davis player. And that one's going to go out of bounds. And we got some really rainy conditions. It's a rainy fall day, about low 70s, high 60s. Uh, there was lots of rain earlier today. It seems like it's starting to back off and be a little bit more on the cloudy side as you see a pass that goes down the line and out of bounds. Um, with UC Davis being from California, they're really not used to having a lot of this rain. So how do you think UC Davis is going to react to these sort of conditions? Yeah, for most sports, rain is not a good thing. But for field yeah, hockey, having the field the more ball. wet is actually good for their playing conditions. But for the UC also, Aggies, who are coming ball, out yes. all the way from California, ball, where it doesn't rain that often, it's gonna, five, going to be out. interesting to see how they are going to play worse. today. Yep, that's one of the advantages too and I think Ohio is another advantage too in terms of body clock where Ohio's never really had to play a lot of games before 12 o'clock uh, in their time and according to their internal clock but UC Davis they're playing this game starting at 11 a.m. Pacific time so that's definitely something that could be significant sort of that body clock sort of game where you got to be ready to go early. Yeah, the farthest that Ohio travels, we believe, is to Iowa, which is only one hour behind, which really isn't that much for these girls from California. This is a whole three hours ahead of what they're normally used to. It is, and it's not like there's a lot of players on uh, UC Davis that are from 
the East Coast or from Louisville or from any area that's in this time zone. Most of their players are from California. Yeah, actually 18 of their players are all from California, which is not something I've really seen on a a field hockey team before most of their players come from all over the country actually all over the world and they only have a couple from out of the united states so it's interesting to see that all of their talent comes right from california this and there's definitely some good talent uh we saw madison theodore she's their senior leader she has 17 shots including eight shots on goal she even had a goal yesterday in their winning effort against st louis uh so she's definitely been the player to watch uh, for UC Davis. She generates a lot of shots. You see her with the ball right there. She passes it downfield, and she looks like she had a teammate open, but the velocity of the ball was just a little too much for her teammate, and that was Brooke Sanchez that was trying to get in front of the defense for the Bobcats, which is a way and is a strategy to try to defeat the Bobcats is trying to get one person ahead, but to make those passes just has a high degree Bobcats. of difficulty, Number especially two, in this Lucy rainy conditions. Yeah, I agree, and that one goal Number that we eight, already got is so four. early on in this game, Number and that's got to be so Lisa great for Lisa. the Ohio girls' mentality, getting a goal so early in this season. Now they want it more. They want to get even more and secure a win this today. You're right, Sam. I mean, this is their first opening quarter goal of the season. And who else but Caitlin Whittle, who seems to always be the focal point of the offense, always finding ways to get down there into the attacking circle. Uh, her scoring the goal and getting it started for the team is really great. I mean, we saw her get it started against Northeastern, and that was able to kickstart them to a three-goal performance. So let's see if they can generate another three-goal performance here in this game at Pruitt Field. I think one thing that helped, too, after they played against Michigan State on Sunday, that aggression that we saw from the Spartans, I think, really helped these girls. They're now playing with a different mentality, and they're coming in here a lot stronger after playing that Big Ten team. So even though it was a loss, they gained a lot of really great skills from that game. Yep, and I'm starting to see that dividends right now. As you're seeing, uh, UC Davis is definitely not as good of a competition as Michigan State. And uh, Michigan State obviously plays in a more difficult conference as there's about six or seven Big Ten teams ranked in the top 25. Michigan State's borderline top 25, Iowa, uh, Northwestern, Maryland, Ohio State. These are just all really dangerous teams. Michigan, Northwestern, Michigan and Northwestern are top 10 uh, in the NCAA field hockey uh, coming into this season. So again, difficult competition playing teams from the Big Ten. But when you play all these schools from the Big Ten, uh, naturally it's going to be a little bit easier when you're playing teams that may not be at the same level of competition. So even if you take your punches against Michigan State, it's going to benefit you a lot more against teams like UC Davis or other MAC opponents. And like I mentioned before, that game had a lot to be proud of. It easily could have been a 6-7 to seven to nothing loss. And they really did a good job with their defense of not making all of those penalty corners um, get into the goal net, I should say. Yep, they did a great job. They showed a lot of resilience and a lot of heart against every single penalty corner as it seemed almost relentless when we were calling that game. It seemed like penalty corner after penalty corner. We're even questioning uh, if that would be the record for the most penalty corners within a quarter. But every single time they were able to stave off every single penalty corner in the second half, and it was beyond impressive. And so far they really have been great defensively, haven't given up uh, any shots so far on the day. And uh, speaking of shots and speaking of goalkeeping, uh, today we have a new goalie uh, in there from the last game. 